I'm here because we're going through a generational transition in our business. We've now got three generations of shareholders, three generations working in the business. And we're working out how we should be staying relevant, how we refine our purpose as we grapple with some of the world's problems of people and planet. The focus therefore now is to recognise that we understand more about the problems, they are potentially even more urgent uh, and more pressing than we had thought, certainly than we, than we thought 25 years ago, and the need now is to turn that awareness into practical action, recognising that if we can reverse some of these major trends, certainly respond to the consequences of them, then that's the only way that we're going to guarantee or ensure a happy, healthy, fulfilling life for our children and grandchildren. Of course, underpinning all of that is impact on climate, on social equity, on biodiversity, the list is long. I think the key thing that companies need to be aware of in the short, medium and longer term is that we are currently living beyond our means in the sense of the ability of the planet to support our current consumption model. That needs to change. That sounds like a lot of risks, but of course, risks are important to the opportunities. And I think the important thing we need to unleash, I suppose, is a recognition that we can solve these problems positively and constructively. The most valuable part of the program so far has been the hard evidence approach to some of the problems that families are facing. And it's been really valuable to have a future-based approach to some of the problems as opposed to just looking at what's worked in the past. First of all, come down to understanding. And, and, and that understanding for me is around complex systems. Understanding the feedback loops, the, the systems dynamics that drive that non-linear change we see in, in, in technology disruptions. Um, understanding how the brakes resist the adoption of new technologies in the, in the early stages. The, the lock-in of the old industry in terms of the infrastructure, the sunk investment, built-out supply chains, the, 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 the consumer demand for the old products, the sort of level of comfort and security we have with those products. But also the, the kind of the death spiral or the vicious cycle that, that drives the breakup of the old as, as economies of scale begin to unwind and reverse, prices increase, investment flows move from the old to the new, regulatory support moves from the old to the new as, as governments and, and investors and, um, and businesses look to, look to uh, lead the disruption. As a private investor, I'm conscious that capital always has some impact wherever it's allocated. And uh, for me, the idea of being conscious about what I do with our investments is, is critical. And it's not just about considering whether or not their investments um, have social and environmental impacts. It's whether or not they're making the right investments to future-proof their businesses, to, to mitigate the risks of social and environmental impacts at the same time as they look at minimising them. So the reason that I decided to come on this programme was because I come from a multi-generational family, but I'm second generation, so there's not necessarily systems in place for succession. Uh, I have a very keen interest in sustainability. Um, so when I was reading the syllabus, I saw that all the information was very relevant to what I'm going through in my life. Um, and it will also help me create a sense of purpose within my family. It's crucial that we equip senior leaders in a really condensed way with both the ability and the knowledge, but just as crucially with the confidence and the networks to lead us on very different issues into a different future.